Welcome to your Jim White on a T Sports Report. Now, Ohio State is the top ranked team in the nation, but it's not easy being number one. You have to play games that are convenient to television schedules, and sometimes they aren't kind to practice time. Just ask Urban Meyer. The Buckeyes played Monday night, 8 o'clock start, had to grind out a win in the second half, had to travel in the wee hours of Tuesday morning, back at it Saturday, not much time to prep for Hawaii. Today's a Wednesday. And uh, we were in just Buckeye gear, but we're going to go Thursday. And tomorrow's third downs. I, it's, I can't believe it. It's Wednesday night. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's real difficult right now. And guys are still sore. Bang, that was a tough game. Ohio State takes on Hawaii from the shoe. 3.30 start. Bucks are a 41-point favorite. Things don't get any easier for BGSU. They are certainly racking up the miles last week in Nashville. Saturday at Maryland to take on the Terps. Tennessee ran for nearly 400 yards, so coach Dino Babers knows Maryland will give them a heavy dose of the ground game, but the Vols couldn't stop the Falcons' aerial attack. Maryland native Ryan Berbering is hoping he's on the receiving end of some big plays. It's a homecoming of sorts for the BG senior. I imagine that they'll try to do the exact same thing to us that they did to Richmond, and you know, based off the tape that, uh, that they're watching with Tennessee. And I'd imagine they'll have some really good ideals based off of how many runs that Tennessee made on us. I've been ready for this game for, you know, years, years now, you know. But the emotion wise, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, you know, playing, you know, at Bird Stadium that you know uh, my high school wasn't even a mile away. Noon kickoff from College Park, Maryland. The game is televised on the Big Ten network. Let's talk high school football. The votes are in. Final count has Big Board Friday heading to Whitmer for the big game of the week. You picked a good one. Both Whitmer and Perrysburg are 2-0. and The two teams have split the last two meetings. Turnovers proved costly last year for the Whitmer Panthers, and certainly they haven't forgotten that. They know they can't beat themselves, and thus far, the Panthers are road warriors. Brutal schedule to open up the season. Big wins at Walsh Jesuit, at Detroit CC, and now they come home for Perrysburg. Uh, this year we've, we've stressed them, you know, ball security, making sure that we're being physical at the point of attack and just trying to put together complete football games. Defensively, we are just um, really trying to get after the ball a lot in practice and, you know, just try to call some turnovers for the offense and help them out a little bit like we did last week. Should be a good one. 7 o'clock kickoff from Whitmer High School. Full recap on Big Board Friday. Girls soccer, Chris Black, St. Ursula Arrow is up 1-0, trying to hand Clay their first regular season loss since 2013. The area Arrow's Celia Otis spots Peyton Sullivan downfield, great ball, and Sullivan blasts it up to the top shelf, 2-0. St. Ursula, well, guess what? Any coach will tell you, just put it on target. Anything can happen, and anything did right through the five-hole Morgan Swearline. With the goal, Arrows would add another 4 nothing winners, three unanswered second-half goals. We try to teach them to, to learn in a game. They make their own decisions. Um, so we problem-solve at practice so they can problem-solve during a game. And some baseball scores for you. The Indians just beat the White Sox, and the Tigers were shut out by the race. And that's your T-Sports. Welcome to your Jim White Honda T-Sports Report. Two weeks of high school football in the books. Week three should be even better. Whitmer versus Perrysburg is a game that catches my eye. The two teams have split the last two years. I stopped by Perrysburg's practice earlier today. Jackets are 2-0, have outscored opponents 91-6 to between their last scrimmage and the season opener. Perrysburg corrected their approach to practice. Coach Kriegel believes it made a difference, and the focus has to be sharp for the Whitmer game. We can't turn the ball over. we got to take advantage of possessions. Um, last year against Whitmer, we were two very evenly matched teams, and they probably made a few more mistakes than we did, and that was the difference in the game. We just got to come out strong, play fast, got to do our same stuff that we've always been doing, and hopefully that's enough. If not, we're going to have to find a way to win. I mean, we just need to practice hard this week and just go, go at them hard and just hit them in the mouth and just play as hard as we can. Should be a good one. 7 o'clock kickoff from Whitmer High School. Do you want to see Whitmer Perrysburg as our top game? It's your choice. Maybe you want to see Sandusky Fremont Ross or Tenor Wasion. Southview Finley should be a good one as well. So cast your vote on ToledoNewsNow.com. Who wants to be on TV? 
Join us in Sylvania for the weekly Frickers Camp. We'll be out there following the Northview Bowser game, and it's always fun. It's a fun time with the band, the players, the coach. Frickers Camp, only on Big Board Friday. And let's not forget about our Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Pack a Pickup promotion. This week, it's at the Northwood Rossford game, so don't forget to bring your canned goods at Rossford. Your donation helps benefit the Seagate Food Bank. Quick break from football, a good matchup in volleyball. Notre Dame home against Clay, and look at Notre Dame work the offense. Sam Moshinsky with the set for her line mate, Allie Spewick, and she puts it away. All right, Clay at the far end, in the middle, they'll look to Shelby Capperhammer, but Notre Dame wins this match in four. Back to the gridiron. Saturday, it's time to iron off your khakis. Make your way to the big house. Jim Harbaugh makes his home coaching debut in Ann Arbor. So Michigan coming off a tough road loss at Utah. Wolverines looking to grab their first win of 2015. Coach Harbaugh says his guys on both sides of the ball know what to do, but thought they were double-checking themselves throughout the opener. I've seen a lot of first games where... You know, there's more error. There's multiple error. There's mul multiple missed assignment. Uh, and we didn't have that very much. I really thought our guys knew what they were doing and for the most part really executed what they were doing. And they can execute it a lot faster and, uh, and a lot better. Michigan hosts Oregon State Saturday, noon from the Big House. We'll be there to provide you with full coverage. Toledo will play its first official game on Saturday. Rockets headed to Little Rock to take on an explosive Arkansas team. The 18th ranked Razorbacks crushed UTEP 48 to 13. The Miners decided they were going to focus on stopping the run. Arkansas lit up the scoreboard with the passing game. The Rockets are a 21 and a half point underdog. See on the, the very first series that they were going to tilt their, their coverage down in the box and have nine guys out there leave, leave their guys out a little bit on the perimeter, and uh, that's what you have to do. And, and, you know, if that's what it is, that's what it is. We have some explosive players with some speed that I think can create big play opportunities. So Rockets, Razorbacks kick off at 4 o'clock Eastern time from Little Rock. And right now, the Tigers and Rays tied at 7 in the 11th inning, and that's your T-Sports. 28-14, and Jason Hurst has more from Cleveland. Johnny Football is back, at least for a week. Gets his first NFL victory, and he delivers a scoring strike to Travis Benjamin. Right when his team needed him the most, ran off the field. The chance of Johnny, Johnny. It was a play reminiscent from his college days and the defense. They sat to Marcus Mariota seven times, hit him so hard, knocked him clean out of his cleats. I didn't even know his shoe came off until somebody told me. Uh, his, uh, I saw the helmet go off uh, after I hit him, you know, I, and you know somebody asked if I, uh, if I if I wanted to hurt him or anything, but that's not, you know, we go out here for, you know, we go out and play the game. Our defense is executed. You know, we did a great job with just uh, staying focused and you know focusing on doing our own job. You know, not worrying about our, our you know teammates and making sure the offense is doing anything right. Get him on the move and let his eyes do the work, and you know we know he's got a great arm and he can run and get out of trouble. So that's what's nice for us. We just buy him a little bit extra time. He can make big plays. And you know, Travis got set for separation, made a big catch, and you know, walked in. So we're happy about it. All of the Browns players that I talked to said it was important to get a win in the home opener, give it back to the fans, and they'll be right back here next week against Oakland. One o'clock kickoff. Reporting from Cleveland, Jason Hurst, T Sports. Big late. Toledo wins at 24-10. They are now 4-0, and Jason Hurst has more from Muncie. Jordan, historically, Toledo has had their hands full playing in Muncie, but they are able to hold off a late Ball State rally. They get the victory. They're 4-0, their first MAC win of the season. The defense set the tone. After Philip Ely threw interceptions on his first two passing attempts, they held their ground and got a fumble recovery on Ball State's third possession. And then Toledo off and running, 24 unanswered points. When we had opportunities to make things happen, we were able to do it. Um, and then I thought Phil persevered and played really well the rest of the football game. So, you know, they did some things that were different. Maybe we hadn't seen, but I thought we adjusted well, and our defense gave us the ability to do that. Just got to have short-term memory. Uh, you know, those things are in the past. You got to worry about what's ahead. We just got dogs that are going to play. Our defense is one of the best in the country, and I'll stand by that statement against anyone. And it's just exciting to see them out there playing. The teacher number that Ailey threw, it happens in the game. That's what defense is for, help, to help the offense out. So we did our job and came out with a W. And Jordan, before we go, Toledo has yet to give up any points in the third quarter. The offensive line has not allowed a sack. 
They'll look to be strong next week at home at the Glass Bowl when they take on Kent State, 3 o'clock start. But reporting from Muncie, Indiana, Jason Hurst, T-Sports. 40, or 53 to 22, Jason Hurst has more. Dan, you can't measure heart, and Swanton certainly has it. What Mike Vickers has done with this Swanton team is unbelievable. They had three key starters go down who were both linebackers and running backs, and it's been next man up. They were down 15-11 at the half and scored 42 unanswered points. That says they're in it together, and they certainly did it. Our guys, uh, I think part of it is how hard they work every day. Um, you know, and part of it is, too, when you get into some good football teams, you're going to have to play 48 minutes, and this is part of the learning process, but I think they're starting to get there. First half, they looked like our team two years ago. Our, co our coaching staff said, play with boys, come out in the second half, play your hearts out, just play, just play as hard as you can, and then everything started clicking. Offense, defense, just everything was wrong. Then when it was an 18-15 game, the Swanton Bulldogs recover a fumble on fourth down and then on fourth down get a touchdown pass, and from there they were rolling. Well, next week they'll try to go 7-0. They're at Patrick Henry, reporting from Swanton. Jason Hurst, T-Sports. In November, five Toledo Marshalls are headed to Orlando to represent Team USA. They'll look to bring home gold. Their ages ranging from 11 to 28. Their disciplines from open floor, similar to gymnastics, to weaponry, to sparring. I know the things that I need to work on, and I know I only have a certain amount of time to, to prove myself. So I get on the ring, I do my best. I don't worry about the clock. I just push, push, push until it's over. Brandon Allen is one of the competitors, but for him, it's just as much fun being their coach. A couple of years ago when I got one of my master's degrees in martial arts, I, I wrote an essay that I wanted to do more with martial arts and it wasn't winning another title. It was helping other people do it because of how much it affects their life. And I put all that I have and it's what I think is the best for me, but the judges might not think so, but at least I do. <laughs> I mostly did did this just for the experience, and then it just became one of the, just like part of my life. The five won together in the Toledo Regional, then Nationals in Detroit. Their skill impressive to watch. We want to recreate something that could really happen, so I'm not just gonna spin around and just willy nilly throw my ball around. These athletes will look to bring home the gold. Reporting from Allen's American Martial Arts in Toledo, Jason Hurst, T-Sports. I'm a certified pump technician. On the weekends, I'm a professional paintball player. I might not be getting paid millions of dollars, but uh, you know, I'm expected to perform at every tournament. Carl Markowski doesn't bring home a big paycheck from the sport of paintball, but he's the only pro from Northwest Ohio. His athleticism got him hooked up with a team in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, the traveling, it's, it's not too bad. It's a couple, couple two and a half, three hour flight. But, um, but yeah, I mean, they pay for all the flights and they get me down there for practices and, uh, and it works out pretty well. India sponsors. Planet Eclipse makes a paintball marker for me, uh, my own personal uh, edition and, uh, and, you know, all the gear that you can use. The sport has taken them around the world. Paintball has taken me to uh, anywhere from Las Vegas. I, I've been to Australia uh, a handful of times. I've been invited to Europe, been invited to, uh, to South Africa, and all over the United States. And to live out his dream, Carl has a pretty understanding wife to make it work. Throughout the years, she's definitely been very understanding. It's been, uh, been a little stressful here and there with how much I have to leave for work. And then on top of that, uh, a lot of the weekends out of the year, I'm gone for, uh, for paintball. But we're actually expecting our first child this upcoming February. Jason Hurst, T-Sports. This is a life changer for me. And I'm sure for a lot of these guys. For the first, you know, I've had Parkinson's now eight years. For the first six years, I didn't do anything. Every year, 60,000 new people are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I have to plan every step if I want to get where I'm going from A to B. If I'm going to B, I have to sort of plan out how many steps I can make to get to my destination. Imagine having tremors so bad that it's difficult to eat, tie your shoes, or even stand up. 
These individuals, through the rigorous training of boxing, feel like champions in their effort to knock out Parkinson's. We're going to go 30 second jabs. I was bitter. I tried to hide it. I denied it. But it got to a point where I couldn't hide it. You got to keep trying to get better. Accepting it. I think that's the toughest part. And once you, once you accept it, then it's a lot easier to, to handle it, I think. One, two, four, pop, 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 right here. Their struggles right are real. They say that, you know, Parkinson's is, is parts of our brain that are leaving and will never be back. And right now, the only thing they say that can change that is exercise. Ten jabs, and then we'll switch, and then ten power hands. One, two. I call them my champions. Uh, a lot of people don't understand. Say, why do you call them champions? These these people here are fighters. They've got a battle in life with this disease, and and they refuse to lose. The University of Toledo's occupational therapy program teamed up with Harry's International Boxing Club, giving locals diagnosed with Parkinson's disease hope. That's my job is to push them, keep pushing, make them better. And so that's that's my job. You can't feel sorry for them. I mean, I do. In a way, in my heart, I do. But on that floor working out, they don't want me to feel sorry for them. Double jab. If they get diagnosed, and this is their next step forward to fight through it and stay healthy and delay the disease. The results are astonishing. I was noticing with my walk. I was shuffling, but now I have better balance. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. They feel a little better because they've dropped maybe 5, 10, 15 pounds. Uh, they've stretched and used muscles they haven't used for a while. I feel a lot better because I'm stronger, especially my upper body. They are fighters and will have the last laugh on Parkinson's disease. Because if you aren't laughing at yourself, you're crying. And crying doesn't help all the time. You, you don't know what to do, you get depressed. But uh, when you turn around and saw, see some of these people and talk to them and listen to how they add humor to Having Parkinson's, it makes it a lot easier to accept. Pop, pop, All right, everybody, give me some. Good job, good job, good job. There you go, good job, good job. Good job, Lynn. Good job, Lynn. Good job, Lynn. Good job, Lynn.